Thank you. That was a song that started with a Mendelssohn Violin Concerto in E minor and ended with a rock and roll, what we call wah-wah violin solo. Some might call that sacrilege or ask who would have the audacity to do something like that. Well, my mom said I could. <laughs> she... <laughs> My mom t gave me permission to do, be, and play anything I could imagine. She said, if you can hear it, you can play it. And the violin was my first language. My mom told me to let the violin and this principle of first hearing, then playing, be my guide for everything. How to sing. My voice grew out of the violin and became the fifth string of my, viol of my, of my violin. Um, how to study in school. I used the, uh, the methodology of practicing scales to, uh, to learn how to play, do geometry. I used it, I used the violin to break free of the notes on the page and improvise. Imagine that. Uh, and my mom said, extrapolate. If you can imagine it, you can create it. And this served me well as I became a recording artist. And uh, and I toured the world. I toured the world and I collaborated with some legendary artists like Jimmy Page and Robert Plant and Herbie Hancock and Sting and George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic. Now I want to tell you a little bit about my mom. My beautiful, gorgeous, hilarious, brilliant mom, Lotus Weinstock. She was a comedian. She was the first woman to perform at the comedy store. She was engaged to Lenny Bruce the last year of his life. And Newsweek magazine called her one of the new queens of comedy. But more importantly, she was a humanitarian and always championing the underdog, performing for every important cause. And she always made time to listen with her full heart. And she was a feminist. She used to do this joke, I think it's inappropriate for women to use the term balls when we're defining courage about another woman. We should be able to look at women like Gloria Steinem and Hillary Clinton and say, God, she's got such ovum. <laughs> and she would do that. She'd go, ovum, ovum. And I hated it. <laughs> but it was my mom's feminism and that of our generation that afforded me every opportunity. So I never even thought twice about almost always being the only woman on the tour bus, almost always being the only woman instrumentalist at every jazz festival, being one of just a handful of working women film composers, which, by the way, is about the same percentage as women firefighters. Uh, I, would, well, I never even thought of myself as a woman. I was just me. So even though I couldn't relate to my mom's feminism because I took it for granted, I still wanted to follow in her footsteps because I was so in love with her. And so the, the notion of social justice was in the air. And besides, I had grown up on welfare and been bullied as a kid for being small. So I knew what it felt like to be the underdog. But it wasn't until I lost my big Atlantic Records deal and everything I'd worked for up to that point in my career because my producer sexually harassed me for months and tried to rape me. It wasn't until I was literally brought to my knees that I finally understood what my mom had been fighting for and that the fight wasn't over. It took me a couple of years to get back up on my feet and not feel like a victim. Um, but during that time, I began to hear things differently, more vulnerably and more compassionately. And my music changed. Now instead of playing to impress you, I play because I want to connect with you. And as I look at the body of work I've done since then, I'm so happy to say there's, such a, there's a really strong thread of social consciousness running through all of it. In fact, I just scored a film about Anita Hill, on whose shoulders so much <laughs> of the women's movement in the last 20 years has been riding. And the theme song I wrote for that is going to be one of the theme songs for One Billion Rising, <laughs> which, which is Eve Ensler's event every February 14th that speaks to the UN statistic that one out of every three women on the planet has been or will be abused or raped in her lifetime. One out of every three on the planet. When 
faced with such an unthinkable and atrocious statistic, my mom's wisdom comes to mind. If you can hear it, you can play it. If you can imagine it, you can create it. In order to end violence against women or make any change, we have to imagine it first. And music helps us imagine and feel the change we want to see in the world. So, what do you imagine? Sorry. 